So I will just show you the actual exploit and tell you step by step um, what happens here. I just need to change the, the sharing. So this is the full exploit and you see the parts of it are, are similar to what we had there. Um, so we have a send request function that looks exactly the same as that. It's actually taken from Python requests uh, module. We have send request still successful function, which also does the same. So in infinite loop, uh, it fetches the positive content matcher result and negative content matcher result. If any of those is true, it returns the result. If none of this is true, it doesn't uh, return anything, but it continues again and again and again until it finds any match. Uh, the identify type function it's also described already so we have those uh, special positive and negative content matchers uh, for different uh, car sets uh, i think this could be written a little bit uh, nicer maybe with with a single function but i didn't want to waste time on this and i left it like this which is not very uh, elegant and let's skip functions uh, to the to, to binary search yet. So we have this function create content matcher. In the earlier phase uh, with sequential search, we only were using uh, creating those positive and negative regexes. Uh, but when we want the binary search, uh, we also needed to return the car set that uh, that was on because this part right here. Uh, it would split the car set into halves. So if we have the alphabet, it splits the alphabet into A, N and into M, uh, O, Z uh, parts. And in this case, uh, we want to return not only the regular expression, but also the whole uh, part of the alphabet. So in this case, it would be car set low would be this A to N and car set high would be O to Z. Uh, you will see in a second why this was important. Uh, as well, in case of special characters, we have uh, another case for it. We have it properly um, escaped just to not have any false, uh, false positives. And we also return the car set. So in this case, um, let's say the car set was uh, dot, dash and the underscore. So here uh, in the part that we are checking right now, we would have the first character, so the dot, and here we would have the rest, so things that we would check later. In case our car set would be only one character, it should be, uh, it, it should look like this, so we don't need square brackets. Uh, we have the negative typical uh, car set search. We return this one character, and the part that we will seek later is known because uh, if we got to this point, then probably. Uh, this this character should be correct if our script script is right. We also have try find next character function. So uh, it also uses uh, pretty much the same logic, but in this case and uh, with the binary search there were a few different cases. So uh, first we create the the content matcher and uh, we have the positive content. This is this function uh, here. So we have positive, negative content matchers, current car set. So what we will check right now and the rest that we will check later. So the result is, of course, sending requests still successful over and over again, the same function. And if the result is true in this case, it means that the next character is inside the, uh, the current car set, which was expressed by cm positive actually by content matcher uh, positive and if this dose was true we have a special case so if length of the remaining car set is zero so if we were in this case then we return uh, this string because it means that we, in the binary search we got to the single letter so we split the alphabet into halves, then into further halves and into further halves. And if we don't have any remaining car set, it means we got to the single 
single one and it means that we have our valid character. Uh, in case that remaining car set is not known, it means that we hit uh, the correct half of the alphabet, but we are not at the single character yet. So we need to recursively call this function, but this time the car set is limited to the one we've established right now. So this will be smaller and later when we hit the correct, we will get to this point and recursively all this will return back those proper characters. In case the result was not the case, then we call this function with the remaining car set. So in case we call this and the content matcher positive was a n from the alphabet and the result is false, it means that the a n from the alphabet is not the next character, but it, it's o z. So then we recursively call this function with this OZ car set. And this is pretty much the implementation of, of the binary search. Um, in this case, which of course um, uses this function split car set, actually this function has a little bug because uh, it returns the middle character in both halves of the alphabet. So this exploit could have been one, two or three percent um, quicker. Function get next uh, character. So it tries to, to, it actually gets the next character because try find next character might succeed, but also might not. And uh, get next character makes it certain that it will actually get uh, that character. So it first ide identifies the type of the next character. And then in the infinite loop, in the loop, which, which will not end until the, the character will be found, it calls this function again and again and uh, this can go for a few tries especially if we have many instances this will be a bit longer and this uh, result thing we will come back to this um, later so uh, the getting the whole token looks like this first as you remember from the comment from google first characters might be uh, might have collisions during uh, with different instances so many uh, tokens in different instances might start with the same character so that's why in this case i've brute forced first 10 characters uh, single threaded and then the rest was being uh, brute forced multi-threaded so this first part uses this get next character function which I told about previously and this is not yet uh, using any, any multi-threading and then we have the, the first 10 characters of the function and that's when we start doing this uh, with multi-threading so in this case uh, this remaining just counts how many characters there are left so in case we want you to use maximum of 40 threads it depends of course on our machine on our server on our parameters uh, it just calculates how many uh, characters of the token are left because if we have 20 characters left of the token we can't use all 40 threads so those simple maths uh, and this minimum function does this and then we use get next n characters function and this function uh, creates a many variables that start with multiple dots so if we have a beginning of of the access token that goes uh, let's say like this then with 40 threads it will create uh, one token like this a token like this with two dots with three dots and so on and, and so forth until uh, those 40 threads in this case and then it just calls this get next character function uh, and with arguments we have the uh, this array with uh, with our dotted uh, wildcards with our part of the known token and wildcarded part and uh, this results table is just uh, supposed so this get next character function has a place uh, where the results can be saved and it of course iterates with it um, simply 
this could also be done uh, better this could be thread safe it's not but we anyway we uh, don't edit the same index multiple times so this shouldn't be a problem so let's see um, how this uh, how this works this is where I have this this exploit and when I run it, it will hopefully uh, brute force data we see the huge loads of requests on the left hand side in the server's logs and we are starting to brute force the token. And the, the first part is a bit slow because it's done single threaded in case there are any collisions and after 10 characters it will start uh, using multiple threads. I hope my laptop will not explode because with uh, OBS it's quite hot to be honest but I hope it will be uh, just about right. I can also maybe um, open the exploit here just so we can see it. Or maybe I will just not do anything. Let's wait for the token to fulfill. I'm root asks, I want to become a bug bounty hunter like you, but funny thing is that I do not have PC still. I am learning using my phone. My question is, is there any app like Burp Shoot I can use for bug hunting? The, so the, the first thing is I am not uh, a bug hunter, uh, but Anyway, answering your question, I don't think there is anything like Burp Suit for phones. Uh, I think it would be extremely hard. Uh, I think that you, you probably have to just uh, wait and try to accumulate some money and buy at least uh, some, some basic, uh, basic device that will allow you to, to use Burp. So as we see, we have more and more characters of the token. We have 10, so it already started doing this uh, multi-threaded. So the next next part we see will be uh, the token longer by 40 characters. So this is this is the part with, where um, it actually has those those many threads. Yeah, Sha, Sha Buruks. I also think that uh, there is nothing better than having a script that brute forces something blindly and it does it successfully and you see the, the access token leak character by character. This is to me absolutely, uh, absolutely beautiful. I, can, I also like to, to have prints that, you know, prints every new character. I, I will do this in a second, just I will let this uh, finish till the end. Yeah, my, my laptop is really hot at the moment, but works well as, as long. Strange thing with those prints that it only prints those tokens after, you know, some, some uh, series of requests and it prints the tokens from, uh, from multiple requests and uh, then it only prints again just logs because when I was debugging this I, I used those prints regularly and it worked just fine just fine so I don't know why it mm, didn't work now this this takes a while uh, I'm thinking if with those all this stress on my processor I could have maybe used a bit less uh, less threads maybe 20 would be alright but I hope it will finish uh, at least those 40 characters soon. And in a second we will uh, I will open this in a new window 
this exploit because it's in different folder and we will uh thank you for much for your reply no problem hakim i create a code which which i can send requests to a server and it bugs the server i tried on big server uh, the question is what is the the response code because it's key if it's 400 then probably it's a problem with your json if it's 500 then your json is okay but your data inside is uh, is less okay let's say I'm happy you like it, the blue light. Okay, I'll kill this and I will start this again, but with less uh, with less threads this time. And I will add also printing because I, I, I love when it prints one character by one character uh, when, when getting uh, the next parts of the token. So it should be here. Um, Next, uh, it will be here. Print next car and max threads. Let's go for let's go for ten. Hacking me a. Honestly, my, my computer is at, under a big stress at the moment. Uh, OBS is also... I don't know actually why is this uh, that much exhausting, but it, it uses um, a lot of resources. So yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. I was uh, considering if uh, I could start this server on a, on a different machine, on a VPS, but I think with the latency between me and that machine, it could be even worse uh, in terms of time to brute force the token. So I decided this is uh, less than, than ideal, but uh, better than, than doing this remotely. I have Kali on my computer. I'm trying to learn more specifically auto repeaters to automate my exploits. I've never had a bounty before. Do you think this is a good strategy? Auto repeaters. I, I I think this is an extension, but I've never really used auto repeaters. I think if you are starting out, you should probably focus on on manual learning, on understanding everything. Uh, even if it's unnecessary a bit, you could uh, have an additional uh, spend additional time just to understand things, how they work. Even if you are using automated tools, it's good to know what they are doing under the hood, uh, because in the long run it allows you to understand what happens it allows you to uh, interpret those results so i think that uh, automation for the beginning is not the best strategy i think uh, doing manual things uh, is what should be done at the beginning in the meantime we have our access token and we see with 10 threads it's actually going much quicker and uh, we see them printed in this form one by one uh, as they in the order that they are actually uh, brute force and at the end you know, we see we see the access token with the additional 10 characters and here we are starting the next 10 characters because because it does it uh, in in those packs of 10 characters so uh, we have our access token expanding uh, Definitely with 40 threads it was uh, it was locked uh, somewhere because it took much much longer than it should. Let's wait for a few more characters. Uh, it's also a good time to ask some some questions and we'll probably conduct the stream um, right here. Next 10 characters are here. Very nice.
yeah it goes pretty quickly now honestly i'm i'm surprised that it worked on a production server because with 54 instances the amount of requests is much much higher than here because here with four instances it's not that much but uh, in the real world it must have been really really consuming but as i've said before with actual load balancing and not only simulated load balancing because um, in case of of this uh, this script this is this is load balancing it's uh, an array of four different keys and it just randomly uh, chooses one of those keys so this is the simulated load balancing so if you have 54 instances here it will not work at all but uh, yeah in the real world when the when the traffic was actually uh, routed to different instances it probably didn't affect a single instance that much Shaburx asks how old uh, were I when I started hacking so often we hear uh, many many uh, stories that someone you know started hacking with when they were five uh, five years old seven years old things like this for me it was not the case uh, in the day of my 19th uh, birthday i didn't even know i'm so passionate about uh, hacking and cyber security i got interested in it uh, when i was going to the to the university and before before going that i was on a conference and uh, i saw I think materials of, of a guy named uh, Jean Coldwin, uh, he's from Google, and it was like like first thing, so it was quite late uh, at the age of uh, of 19 years old for me. Thanks David uh, for watching, amazing uh, exploit uh, from your side. I have a question for you, did you maybe try bypassing their protections uh, to get another 30k? Okay, it's thrown an exception which means that uh, probably that either the server crashed or the token was full i think we can uh we had the that's probably like about 60 characters okay i i think it's dead <laughs> almost yeah i was also surprised by by guys from google that that they did this but uh, yeah, kudos to you anyway because you did the most uh most difficult part and you got the got the reward for it rsa uh please don't make this private i will see maybe i will edit this uh and leave the the most relevant uh things public but yeah i will make sure that one way or another uh you will have a way to to actually see uh how how the exploit was written david says that he actually didn't i think he, he means didn't uh make the hardest part i think you did the discovery is is most always the the hardest part uh okay thanks everyone for attending I hope that you, you've learned something. I will publish this script uh, and uh, on the GitHub, on the, on the same repo, I will also add some comments so this, this code is more readable. Uh, again, thanks everyone for attending. For, thanks for your activity. Thanks for, for your questions. And uh, have a good Friday afternoon. Goodbye and uh, see you uh, another time.